Hello and welcome to another edition of The Nation. November is Men's Health Awareness Month and doctors say it is important for men to get their annual checkups. Have you done yours yet? If you haven't, uh, stay on. We've got a lot of information coming our way. But men uh, like me and of course you, we generally skip our checkups. Uh, this is a macho male image thing. I'm tough. I don't need to reach out for help. I don't need to show my emotions. I don't need to let people know what's going on. And again, this has been passed down through many generations. I saw my father do it. I saw my father's father do it. So um, it is what it is, but uh, we're dealing with it and learning more as we go along. But more recently, KJ has said that we as a nation are very unhealthy, him included. So what does this all mean? And why are we talking about this? It's Men's Health Month. It's a uh, Prostate Cancer Month. Uh, most of us know it as Movember. But more importantly, let's take a deep dive into men's health. Dr. Prabjo joins us. He's a gastroenterologist and uh, he's been on TV many, many times talking to us about problems of the gut. Doc, thanks very much for taking time off to be, uh, be with us. It's men's health, men's health Month. Uh, we know that the country is unhealthy. Most of us uh, have known this for a while now. Now, how are you reconciling this as a gastroenterologist? Well, um, okay. Well, firstly, the dash is not real. That's fake. Uh, basically, it's all without food. <laughs> happy, happy November. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, happy November. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe this will suit. I don't know. Anyway, coming back to what you're saying, health is, is, is a, a relative perspective. An old person wants to carry their grandchild. Someone like yourself wants to run a marathon. It really, it's it's a perspective thing. But in Malaysia, most of the time, our problems come from the food we eat, which is very bad. Uh, I mean, I always say there's nothing worth eating after nine o'clock. Nothing healthy, at least. Um, look, look, and, but people have been getting on diets and stuff. People have been getting on keto diets. They've been getting yeah. on so many kinds of diets. So I, sure. I, I guess you know, for me, through the lenses, mm -hmm. it seems like people are actually on the bandwagon of wanting to be healthy. Yes, they are. And unfortunately, a lot of times they get the information from little WhatsApp messages, which has got no verification whatsoever. And, and it's proven that majority of these uh, so-called uh, fad diets don't work. They work for a short while and then later on you put everything back on. In fact, you might, be end, you might even end up with a higher percentage fat at the end of it all. Uh, the only kind of diet that's actually really proven to help you lose weight and keep it keep it off is a plant-based diet. Even the world-famous uh, uh, Weight Watchers diets tend to fail after a few years. So, so diets so, are bad so, most of the time. So you are saying that a plant-based diet is uh, probably one of the best diets in the world. If you're going to go plant-based, uh, you would say go for it. I, I would say yes. As it stands right now, yeah. But remember, I'm not asking you to be a vegan or vegetarian. You get deficiencies that way. When I say plant-based, I mean increase the amount of plants you eat. All the other things are important. I mean, we have uh, canines for a reason. We we're omnivores. We're we're not we're not we're not cows. I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> interestingly, I know this month is uh, all about prostate uh, awareness. You know, and, uh, it's I've learned some yeah. eye-opening stuff about about mine. That is, uh, but having uh, th uh, that being said, um, you chose to talk about colorectal cancer. Um, yep. and why did you choose to talk about this in a month when everyone else is concentrating on prostate cancer? Uh, what, well, okay. you know, why are you passionate about this cancer in particular? Well, uh, it's not really a passion, but firstly, I'm a gastroenterologist, so oh, it is okay. within. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, um, it is within our field of range, and and don't forget, this Movember thing started with men's health. It's not just prostate cancer; it's any cancer, any health issue. Uh, it's just that prostate cancer seems to get the line light or testicular cancer and so on and so on. But colon cancer, colon colorectal cancer is very important. This is the second or third commonest cancer in the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's high up there uh, on, on the list of, of things that could really kill you. And men are highest, uh, at higher risk at this. Chinese men in particular in Malaysia are at the highest risk. Doesn't mean that you're safe. Everybody is at risk to some degree. And, and almost always it comes from polyps. Now, everybody goes for health checks. They, they go, they go and have their, their screening blood test and they say, Oh, look, I'm well and things like that. But then what about your screening colonoscopy? This is something that you can actually do okay, I, I, and I'll potentially. You here because you're talking about polyps, you know, how would you uh, simplify polyps for us? Uh, ah, okay. How would you describe yeah. it? Uh, well, let's see, I get carried away. Uh, a polyp is just essentially a little growth of, of it's like a pimple, somewhere describing it, or, or um, 
like a, like like a little lump in the colon, uh, and it may look benign, but some of them have a chance of becoming cancers if left un unchecked. Some people have a higher chance of developing polyps. People with chronic inflammatory diseases, uh, family history of cancers, or even previous cancers. But the main thing is this: if we see a polyp when we do a colonoscopy, we remove the polyp. Your risk or the risk of this becoming something nasty is gone, and you're back to the baseline. But if you leave it there. Um, you know, the, the chance does happen, does, does, does increase the risk of cancers. Now, it's something that you can actually do about it. It's so much of an issue now that even the screening rate has moved from 50 years old to 45 in most countries. Now, at 45, uh, um, you probably think you're quite well. And there is a reason why we've moved it down to 45, because this is something that's potentially preventable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, with screening, how much has the uh, technology changed in the number of years you've been doing what what, what you're doing now is yeah. screening becoming uh, is it still a lot of a fast where you have to you, you you have to be faster and then you have to do some bowel cleansing before before you get in there are there any better ways of doing that uh, to walk us through that please yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of ways of screening. Uh, depends on which countries. You can do stool samples, but they're, they're not the best tests. You can do CT scans, but mostly reserved for people who are unfit for colonoscopies. The best test, the gold standard, is still a colonoscopy. We got lots of different techniques, lots of different uh, new equipment using artificial intelligence, uh, different uh, white light and uh, narrow band imaging techniques to help us identify these lesions and even even decide then and then whether this lesion is actually going to be a problem or not and whether you need it removing or not. Uh, so every, year by year, things are just getting better and better and better and it's advancing. Now, with regards to the procedure itself, yes, you need the bowel prep. We need it to be clean to, to pick up lesions. Otherwise, we miss half the things. As to how long it takes, you know, maybe 10 minutes, that's, that's it. The bowel prep is the worst part of the test. Is it painful? No, not at all. A bit discomfort because of the air, but that's it. It's something that could potentially uh, affect your life for 10 minutes. Well, some people worth it. want to be sedated when stuff like this, you know, when you yeah. perform uh, uh, something like this on, on sure. a patient, do you still sedate patients or can they do it you know, uh, without sedation? A lot of people have qualms about sedation these days. Yes, I mean, uh, sedation at the end of the day are drugs and you can drop your blood pressure. There's lots of other risks with it. Now, you don't always need sedation. If the patient is nervous and wants sedation, by all means, go for it. It is not necessary. Certainly, we do not force it onto you. Uh, a lot of my patients go without sedation. And, and throughout the test, they're even asking questions, seeing us cut out the polyps, being absolutely comfortable, being part of the discussion while they're having the colonoscopy. But then again, there are patients who are very... Uh, 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 nervous or even some patients who've had previous surgeries and things which makes the procedure a bit more difficult sedation can help well maybe a bit painkillers can help but it's not a need or a must it's patient's choice really mm -hmm. well uh i mean there are a lot of questions with regards to uh, what you call that doing a colonoscopy and uh, having said that um people have gone for colonoscopies and for people who are on blood thinners are, are there any things they need to worry about before they go for something like this. Because if you've established there's a polyp and if you want to take it out, and if someone is on, say, aspirin or clopidogrel, is it possible for you to do that then? Yes, so so it really depends on, on what they're on. Uh, for example, if it's aspirin, it's okay. If you're thinking on like clopidogrel or other uh, blood thinners, warfarin uh, and all the newer, epixiban, et, et cetera, uh, you need to stop them. And depending uh, on what you're on will dictate how long you're, you'd have to stop it. Now, it's not up to us to willy-nilly stop it. First, we need to know who started it and what for. For example, you may need the clopidogrel or the epixiban because of uh, life-threatening a heart attack that you had before. And in that cases, we discuss with your cardiologist and find the best way to approach this. So that is not a reason not to have a screening colonoscopy. Um, it, is, it, is, it is something you should discuss actively, but it's not something to be fearful about, not in the slightest. Right. So if you're 45 years old, or if you're above 45, and if you haven't done the scope, uh, colonoscopy, you need to get that done. You need to speak yeah. to your doctor or actively think about getting it done. Now, once you start doing it at 45 or at 50, how many years apart should the next one be? How okay, so, so so if you're absolutely well and your, your index colonoscopy, it'll be decided from there where you where you should do it. In some people, you never need to do it again. Some people have five years, some three, some one. 
guidelines are changing all the time. But one thing I have to stress is that people with history of uh, uh, family history or a history of inflammatory bowel disease or previous cancers, etc., the the criteria or the, the timing for it is very very different. It's not one fits all. It is individualized, uh, and it all depends on your history and what we find during the the colonoscopy. And that is very clear what happens next. It's not up to me to decide it. There are clear guidelines of what to follow. So it is a standard uh, uh, a procedure, standard um, review guideline to follow that, that mm -hmm. it really depends on what we find on the day. Right. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, uh, Prabhjot. Uh, very quickly, yeah. uh, three tips for men's health uh, in conjunction with yes. Men's Health Month. What would be your best three tips other than wear a fake mustache? Okay, well, okay, well, apart from fake mustache, uh, eat more plants, that's the best way to get your fiber in. If you're 45 and you're otherwise well, get your colonoscopy done. The third thing, and it is very important, uh, men do cry, men's health, mental health, it's all related to your gut. Talk to somebody about it. If you're not sure what's going on, talk to someone. We don't need to be macho anymore. It's macho enough to, to ask for help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and for you, I mean, uh, what, what, what is... What is a principle you live by on a daily basis? You see people, you see people who are unwell, you help them get back into the straight and narrow of life. And sometimes yeah. it affects someone who's working in uh, the medical fraternity. What do you do? Is what, what's that one principle you hold to with regards to your health? I think I, I, uh, if it's my health, just, just do all you can, stay active, eat well. If, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's for a patient, I would say, look, you know, you might get information from other places, be it Google or WhatsApp message. You're not sure. Ask your doctor. Speak to your doctor. You've got nothing to lose. Don't go on down the wrong path and then it's too late. Just ask. Yeah. Now, we've got two minutes left. Once again, uh, we need to put this message out there. Uh, go out, get your colonoscopy done. What would be your parting message with regards to getting your colon checked? Very quickly, we've got about a minute and a half before we end this edition of the nation. I don't need a minute up. You just, if you're 45, <laughs> that's it. 45. Go and talk to your doctor about it. It's no longer 50. It's 45. 45. So if you're 45 or if you're moving into the age of 45, it's about time or it's best you think about getting your colon checked. And uh, if you've had it done before, think about doing it again. Of course, the frequency will depend on your medical healthcare provider and what they think. Would that be the right advice, Prabhjot? Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. Uh, so in conjunction uh, with the uh, Men's Health Month, uh, you have a fantastic month ahead and a good 2022, my friend. Your message yeah, in you conjunction too. with the end of the year and also as we move into the next year. Very quickly. A uh, message? Just, just eat more plants. I'll keep saying that. Eat more plants. <laughs> Honestly. Eat, more plants. eat right. more plants. Don't be a vegetarian. Just eat more plants. Right. So you're going to keep that, that mustache until the end of the show, isn't it? I, I don't know. It might be falling off right now. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Dr. Prabhjot, uh, yeah. who's joined us uh, to talk a little bit about men's health and what's important in the month of November, now that we're concentrating on men's health in Malaysia and the world over. With that, I'm Jared Ratnam, bringing the nation of this edition of The Nation to a close. Have a great day. And thank you very much for staying with us right here on Brunama TV.